دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله You're watching Lifting the Fog A program designed to remove the misconceptions and misunderstandings about Islam and what it teaches I'm your host Yusuf Estes and during this segment we'd like to discuss the subject of the Prophet Jesus peace and blessings be upon him and his status in Islam I'd like to begin by mentioning that his name actually wasn't Jesus because that's an English form of something which is an older word in the Hebrew language it would be Yeshua and in the Arabic language it's Isa and this is the reference that I'm making now because this is from the actual scriptures themselves just as my name is Yusuf but in the English language you would pronounce it as Joseph so just to clarify who exactly we're speaking of I'm going to refer to the scriptures of course from the Muslim point of view is the Quran and then also to the Kitab al -Maktis. this is the word in Arabic for the Bible the holy book in the Bible and in the Quran in the Arabic language for Christians Arab Christians and the Arab Muslims we find the same word Isa is used in reference to the Messiah Masihi and this is who I'm speaking about now and what is his status for us as Muslims Allah tells us in the Quran about the miracle birth of Jesus he uses this mu'ajiza or miracle as something amazing for us to understand and it's a test for the people to believe it because in the Quran we find that the angel Gabriel goes to the mother of Jesus and tells her that she's going to have a baby she's amazed at this and wants to know how is it that I'm gonna have a baby and no man has ever touched me and she's by the way a little bit afraid of this angel coming to her like this because she doesn't know what what this is about and then as Allah explains in the Quran the angel tells her that whenever Allah wants anything to happen it's simple for him he merely says kun fayakun be and it is and such is the way of the birth of Jesus that he can create a human being without a father this shouldn't be strange for us though if we consider that Adam's wife Eve is made from his side so Eve is created without any mother Jesus is created with no father but we don't worship Eve and watch this how about the creation of Adam in the first place he has no mother he has no father but we don't worship Adam therefore in the same way we understand Adam being created without mother or father Eve is created with no mother Jesus created it with no father each of these is a test for us to believe this is a part of the belief in Islam and as we mentioned in another segment when we talk about Islam we're saying the way of life in submission to God and each and every prophet taught the same thing that is to say that Islam or submission to God has to be on his terms and he is testing us he's showing us what he wants us to believe what is it that Muslims believe about Jesus and that's what this segment is dealing with and what is the proof we understand in Islam that Jesus is the Messiah we've already mentioned that but what do we mean about this in the Arabic language the word is Masihi and Masihi comes from a root which is mess which means to wipe or touch something like this it was the word used in the Hebrew language in the Old Testament because they used to dip their fingers or their hand in oil like olive oil and anoint or wipe the head of the king or the malik and so this was an anointing and that's what we refer to today even in English when we talk about 
anointing, anointing the head with anointing oil. And that is to show the one who has been selected and chosen to be the leader or the king of the people. This is why Jesus is correctly known as the Messiah. He's the one who is chosen by God. He is the one who is appointed and he is rightfully known as the Messiah or Messihi in the Arabic language. Okay, next. When we talk about the angel Gabriel and he comes to Mary, we find the similar story in the New Testament. The story is mentioned in Matthew and another gospel as well, talking about when the Holy Spirit comes to Mary and tells her that she's going to have a baby and explains to her that she will be a, giving birth as a virgin, that no man will touch her. Well, this is kind of an amazing thing when you consider it. You've got a Holy Spirit saying this, then you've got the angel saying this. Now, I'm talking about the Gospels. In the Quran, we have the angel Gabriel saying these same words to her, that she's going to have a miracle birth. But we also know in the Quran that the title of the angel Gabriel is Ruh, which means spirit, Qudus, which means sacred. Ruh Qudus. He is the sacred spirit of Allah. Meaning that God has created the angel of Jibreel, or Gabriel, and has given him life, and he is carrying a sacred task, and that is to do as Allah orders him to do as the archangel. So, Gabriel is two things. The angel Gabriel, and he is this Holy Spirit, if you will. This clears up a big misconception that some people have, saying that, because it's mentioned in Quran, that we have a trinity in the Quran. We don't have, because we know that God is one, not three. And although the angel Gabriel has a big task, a big job, and something very important, he's still a creation of Allah. He obeys Allah and does what Allah commands him to do. Therefore, he's not a partner with Allah. From this, we understand the position of Prophet Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. That he has a very high status. He's very close to Allah, without doubt. But he's not Allah, and he is not a partner with Allah. So this negates the fact that Jesus is God, for us as Muslims. It also negates the idea that he's a partner with God as in a trinity. This helps us to clear up the misconception about God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. In fact, there are three separate things here, as we have already noticed. Allah, who is not like his creation in any way, shape or form. Jesus, who is having a very high status, but yet not God, not running things. And the Holy Spirit, or Jibril, Gabriel, and they sent out. Being, again, in a very high position or status with the law, but not being a law or a partner with the law. I realize that there are those who would ascribe partners to a law by saying that there is a trinity. But this is totally negated in the Quran. Very clear when Allah says to the Christians to stop saying three, that it would be better for them to stop saying God is three. When in fact, the Bible consistently and emphatically insists that God is only one. To know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. In the book of Hosea, we find a clear statement when God says, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. Beside me there's no other God. And beside me there's no Savior. So the idea of salvation by going through something else or someone else is negated even in the Bible itself. I realize that for some this will come as a shock or it even could be something that they would not like to agree with. However, going through the logical steps and conclusions it makes sense and at the same time the Quran insists that there is only one God and He is one. Let's look to the Quran to see what it says specifically about the nature of God. And then we'll consider what is the nature of Jesus. Inshallah, God willing. Allah says, A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim, Qul hu Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, Lam yalid, wa lam yulad, 
walam yakulahu kufuwan ahad. The meaning, more or less, the English says, to say, this is telling Muhammad, sallallahu peace be upon him, to tell the people that he, meaning Allah, he is a law. Now this is emphatic, saying that he is a law and he is what? Ahad. That's the word used in Arabic. Ahad, often translated to be one, is actually better understood as unique. Because in Arabic, when you count, you say, Wahid, Ithneen, Thalatha, Arba. The word Wahid means one. But the word Ahad, actually it means one with no two after it. It means unique. And this is exactly a description of Allah. It happens to be one of his isma, one of his names. He is Ahad, Al-Ahad. By the way, he also has the name Wahid. He is Al-Wahid. But specifically here, he is saying the word Ahad, unique. The word Samad. Samad means eternally sought after by his creation, yet he is so independent, he doesn't need the creation for anything. Then it says, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. He is not the father or the progenitor of anything or anyone. And he's not the son or the result of any genealogy. Then it continues, wa Lam Yakulahu Kufu Wanahat. And there isn't anything like him. He is a had unique. This is called Surah Al Ikhlas. And by the way, it's so important, this surah, this chapter in the Quran, that it is known as being worth one third of the Quran itself. It's a very beautiful surah. Now, I recommend for the Muslims to study it and learn more about it and its explanation as well. Now, on this subject, I would like to compare our understanding of Jesus to our understanding of Allah. What we just said about Allah. Does this really fit the description of God? Does it fit the description of Jesus? Okay. Jesus was born. God is not born. Jesus ate food. God doesn't have any needs. Jesus had to sleep. And we find that this is not something that we should attribute to God. So with this in mind, we'll begin to think now and reevaluate our understanding of God versus our understanding of Jesus. Think about that for a few minutes and we'll be back with the second half of this segment in just a minute. <laughs> My name is Shri Vutuni and this is brought to you from Huda TV. Um, in today's edition we'll be discussing about uh, the day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated the samawat with darkness, the firmament with darkness, and equated the earth with light. Why? Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen pillar? Everything is running, but the relationships are fixed. Yes. So that it would appear to people as if nothing is running, you see. We are destroying the, our environment with our own hands. And that's why the Quran says, Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Welcome back to our segment on the subject of the role of Jesus, the Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, in Islam. We've been discussing the attributes about God and comparing them to the attributes of Jesus as a human being. We've noticed, of course, that the things that Jesus is well known for, such as being born, we said God is not born, eating, we said God has no needs, he's totally self-sufficient, sleeping, something that doesn't befit the nature of God, there are absolutely two separate distinct characters here uh, or characteristics the characteristics of Almighty Allah and that of what he has created let us now look to something else that Allah has said in the Quran to help us confirm our suspicion that Jesus in fact isn't God or isn't a partner with God 
According to the Quran, in Surah